shit, 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 boy, on P on the track. With your big fan, Mr. Dog, the Ultra Melanite, coming to you live and direct once again from Charleston, South Carolina, aka the Holy City. You dig me? And today, I guess we're going to discuss who were the first humans, the origin of humanity. You dig? We answer this question in order to clarify who were the first Americans. For some reason, a lot of people think that us so called black indigenous people cannot be from America. Y'all think we're from Africa. It's crazy. So I, that's the whole purpose of identifying who were the first human beings. And another thing I want to say before we get started is this is the truth that we have come through through all of our research. This is not an idea that someone is pushing our head, you dig? This is through all of our research. This is what our mothers and our, our grandmothers and, and them boys from around the hood and everybody else pretty much knew growing up, you dig? It seems like it's a lot of this information is being lost in the sauce nowadays. So we bring in most of this to light. This is the truth that we have come to. We don't have a belief system. We have truths that we have arrived to. We don't deal with people with the belief system because that's an endless argument. That's an endless debate. <clears throat> Until we can have a debate about truths, you know what I'm saying, that the conversation ain't going to go no further than that. So everybody has their own truth. I hope that you have come to your own truth about this topic. For us, we understand that people could not have evolved from monkeys. We do not mess with Charles Darwin in that aspect. We're not saying Charles Darwin was an idiot. Obviously, he's pretty smart. They had an agenda behind what they were doing, you dig? But we don't deal with, with Darwinism or we don't deal with evolution and say that one person or, or a human had to come from another species. That's that's never happened. You can't prove anything like that. You dig? <clears throat> so for all of y'all who believe in the outer Africa theory, you will also ultimately have to believe that everybody came from monkeys. Because the outer Africa theory is the theory of evolution. It's how people evolved from a homo erectus, the homo habilis. You know what I mean? Got that backwards homo Homo habilis, the Homo erectus, the Homo sapien, the Homo sapiens sapien, and you know what I'm saying, and then they got, well, we must have a missing link in between, you dig? All of that story is false. Nobody came from a monkey. I don't care if you're a so-called white person or a so-called black person. So let me begin the presentation on how we can break it down and make it as simple, simplest as possible for people to understand, research-wise, right? There are two major categories of the prehistoric human. One to represent the Eurasian and one to represent the so-called Negroid or the Homo sapien, right? So the, the very two first archaic human being classifications, I'm not saying that all other humans arose from two people. Nah, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying two classifications of people all throughout the planet. So the major classifications was the Homo Heidelberg man, which is a representation of the modern day Eurasian races, and the Homo sapien, which is a representation of the so called modern Negroid races, right? So that's your two groups of prehistoric humans. None of them came from a monkey. Homo Heidelberg man is the one that created the Eurasians and the Homo sapien is the progenitor or the classification of the so-called Negroids, all right? Now, when we talk about the Homo Heidelberg man, we got to also classify them into two separate classifications because we know there's a slight difference between so-called uh, so -called Europeans and so-called Mongoloids or modern-day Asians, right? We know that there's a difference. They're pretty much the same, same people, different type of ethnic groups, but there's a little split. So we got to explain why that is because the Homo Heidelberg man also can be classified into two groups, which was the Homo Neanderthalus, the Neanderthal. We know that most non-Negro people 
have Neanderthal DNA. Most non-Negro people have Neanderthal DNA, right? <clears throat> That's your Cro-Magnon man. When I've been in school, I had the privilege of learning about the Cro-Magnoid. They don't teach y'all about the Cro-Magnoid anymore. Now it's called the early European modern human. But the column of Cro-Magnoid really put things in perspective because for us growing up, we understood that that was the caveman. So when they taught us the progression of evolution and they got to the Cro-Magnoid, we knew that none of the so-called black people were descended from a creature called the Cro-Magnoid. That is for all the non-black people on the planet, right? Especially the ones that lived in the Caucasus regions and in some in North Africa going all the way up into Western Europe. Now, and on the eastern side, their counterpart is the Denisovan. This Denisovan is essentially a Neanderthal. He's pretty much the same as a Neanderthal, but he took a little bit of different features. His, he adapted a little bit different because of the environment. The environment is going to cause people to adapt and change a little bit in their skin tones or, you know, the diet plays a real big part in that also. So a good representation of that, of those people with the Denisovan DNA is a lot of the Asian or Mongoloid types that's in the Polynesian Islands and in the Melanesian Islands, right? And then let's just say Oceania. You dig? So that's your two major classifications of the so-called Eurasia. Uh, you know, um, historically, they were the Homo Neanderthal man and the Denisovan. That was the two groups that that we can classify from the Homo Heidelberg man. So that, that should kill that for a while, and we can go into depth about the origin of the so-called Eurasians in another video. For this video right now, we're going to focus more on our origin in America, right? So the Homo sapien, which is the counterpart to the Homo Heidelberg man, understand that that word Homo sapien is used to identify so-called black people, the so-called Negroid, right? Well, the so-called Negroid, we got to break into two classifications also, which would be the Negrito and the Negrillo. When we were young, once again, we had the privilege of learning about groups of people like the pygmies, right? We learned that they were pygmies all over the planet Earth. Growing up, that was common knowledge. Pygmies all over the planet Earth, you dig? Well, we classify the pygmies within Africa as the Negrillo, right? And we classify the pygmies outside of Africa as the Negrito, right? So all of the Negrito populations, which is the ones we now going to focus, that we are going to focus on today, not to say that the Negrito is any more important or less important than the Negrillo. We focus on the Negrito because we know that this is how our indigenous ancestors in America had to be classified. When I was a child, the indigenous ancestor in America was classified as a Negrito. You dig? But now that history seemed to be erased from y'all, boy. So a good representation of a group of people that we call the Negrito would be the Andamese. And I like to use the Andamese and the Sentinelese because of the pureness of the isolation of the DNA. They didn't do all of this cross-mixing with other ethnic groups. There are over a thousand, probably throughout history, 20,000, 30,000 ethnic groups in Africa alone. There's 30,000 different ethnic groups, got all different phenotypes. They're not 100% the same. They similar, they family, you dig? So it would be fool to think that the Andamese came from Africa. That's just part of the story that they throw in there. And the reason why we know that they could not have immediately migrated from Africa into this spot is because their DNA is different from their counterparts in that area. 
right? Their DNA is more similar to the DNA of the people in Oceania, in Fiji, Melanesia, Polynesia, Australia, Tasmania, and Madagascar, right? Even though they're changing all these places now, they're bringing in a lot of the mongoloid types to replace those people, and that's what they show y'all on TV, on the television, right? <clears throat> but the Andamese is the purest strain. I ain't gonna really say, yeah, I, I can say that purest because they didn't do all of the cross mixing. They are the purest representation of the DNA strand that spread into Oceania. And I and I shouldn't even say it spread. Sorry about that. Not spread. Just to represent the DNA strands in those areas. When we start to say words like spread, it makes people think that one people moved and migrated to populate these places. Nah, God put us here. I have polygenes. I feel like the almighty creator put everybody there in their respective locations. So it would be impossible for a person to leave Africa 60,000 years ago because that's what they numbers say, I think. Always off the top of my head, but I think it's about 60,000, maybe 70,000. They say they left Africa and ended up populating this place inside India, right? And from there, they ended up going and populating the islands and all of that. We know that that story cannot be true because we know that our indigenous ancestor in America was also an Negrito, and that person was found on the East Coast in America and was dated at 15,000 years ago. So if the story, truth be told, that means that they would have had to enter America a long, long time before they made it to this point in America. You dig? And we don't like to debate all of them, them different time frames and stuff, but we also know that here in South Carolina, at the top of site, I say this on many of my videos, the top of site in Allendale, South Carolina, is dated to, to some to be a hundred thousand years old. Well, if you're telling us that people didn't leave Africa until this point in time, how could they have been people right John South Carolina a hundred thousand years ago at the same damn time? Right? This simple logic, grammar logic rhetoric, right? So, like I said, just like this, 30,000 different ethnic groups that inhabited Africa over the period of history, there's just as much that inhabited Americas over the history. I'm pretty sure that these people face different catastrophes and stuff. They have population decreases and increases, just like every other culture. You dig? And we also know that other creatures like the Denisovan and the Neanderthal could have very well been in the Americas also. In that Arctic region of the Americas, you think that there wasn't a, a Neanderthal type human living up there? Because them people didn't come from monkeys neither, you dig? They? they got different origin than us, but they didn't come from, they didn't evolve from no monkey. If you believe that, you dumb deaf and blind, bruh. We know that the Denisovan, that, that archaic, mongoloid type, made it into the Polynesian islands prior to colonialism. We know that there's Polynesians today that have Denisovan DNA. So what makes you think that that same hominid couldn't have been found in America? We personally, through our research, think that that's very well possible. That we don't have any 100% proof or we got some pictures we found of some, you know, crazy looking people. But hey, there's no real proof, so we can't talk about that. The proof that we do know is that for the bones that we found, like Luzia, we know that they were represented, oh, excuse me, as a Negrito population. Unlike the Siberian mongoloid that they try to say were the first inhabitants of America, and unlike the Negrillo in Africa, but more like the Negrito in the India region, in the Indian subcontinent, you dig? So that's an easier way to identify how we got here, where we were, and this is undebatable pan-africans you will never answer the question of how did louisa uh, luzia get in america you will never answer the question of how did these people get in fiji we know that we know that the european didn't bring these people to fiji we know that the european didn't bring luzia to brazil to south america 
So how did they get that, Pan-Africans, before you try to dispute me and say I hate my race and all this? Everything I'm doing is based off of the truth that I have come to. Now, maybe you come to a different truth in your life, and I hope you put logic into why you came to your different truth. Because the truth that I come to is a hundred that we have come to is a hundred. Now, we still adding on to it and building it. So there's some things that may be different, but I'm just going off of how we were taught growing up. The easiest way to break this down is that there are two major classifications of human beings, right? The Homo Heidelberg man, which makes which is composed of the Neanderthal groups and the Denisovan groups, and the Homo sapien, which is composed of the Negrito and the Negrios. And these groups mixed and mingled all across the different between different lines and created us modern humans. Us modern humans got a mixture, a bunch of different stuff going on in us. Unless you one of them Andamese. You dig? I mean, the Sentinelese, them people who ain't who ain't mixing with nobody. You dig? But that's the easiest and simplest way to break it down. And the Greek toe is the, the Negroid outside of Africa. There's no evidence of this Negroid ever being in Africa. It's 30,000 different ethnic groups, man. You wrap your head around that. The Negrillo is the, ne the Negroid in Africa. And like I said, as these different ethnic groups mix with each other here and there, they created different groups. Then they created the Nihilitic groups. You dig in the Bantu groups. I don't know if that's derogatory or what, but you y'all know what I mean. No offense by none of these terms. That's just how I see it. I also know that people like Ashwa Kwesi and them, they call the uh, the elders griots, I think. Well, you know, me liking to deal with language, I say negrio, and that's how they get their word grio for their elders, right? I like to play with words, I like to play with words. I think Ashwa Kwesi just mistaken in the fact that he don't understand that his people most likely are... American Negroes, so-called Negro, right? And I could be wrong about that. He might, he people might be from Africa. I don't know. Don't really matter. What matters is the knowledge that you can understand that the so-called black person was the first person to inhabit this land, and all of these subtropical lands and tropical lands all throughout the planet Earth. I have polygenius. If you're polygenius, if you don't know what that is, just look it up. Life brought it out all over the planet, along with the plants, the animals, everything else. Our origin is not different from the plants and the animals and the water and everything else. The so-called Eurasian groups come from the Neanderthal, which is the Cro-Magna, and the Denisovan. Simple. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this video down in the comment section below. Let me know if you got any different ideas or what truth you have come to that be, may be a little bit different than mine. You dig? Peace out. Y'all holler at your dog, the Ultra Melanite 2019, baby.